There's a first method of um, solution and I don't know if it seemed okay to you to follow that logic, how I got it out of the diagram and then just went straight to try and compute things. Um, I, I think this method works fine and it certainly gets the two marks. I'll come back to question or the part two in a second, but I wanna show you this other way of solving it, which as I said, was inspired by Pahan. Um, and I wonder if you worked out why in that time. Just have a look at this result here, right? U squared plus V squared equals UV. I just went straight to evaluating it. What is U squared? What is V squared? What is UV, I just use these particular forms to do it, right? But I wonder if you look at this and if you stare at it a bit longer, whether it actually looks familiar for another reason. Um, whether you can see, oh, hold on a second, this U squared and V squared and UV, don't they come together in some other um, result, some other package that I've seen before? I wonder if you recognize it yet. I'm not gonna spoil it just yet. Let me see if I've given you enough of a clue to see where I can uh, help you with it, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here, whoopsie daisy, uh, I'm going to come back up to here and I'm going to notice that uh, U and V are related by this pi on 3 anti-clockwise rotation, right? So I'm trying to use vector thinking in this form. So when you go from one to the other, you can actually state V um, as sort of a different complex number in terms of U. Do you see that? Like it shares that same theta up there and it's just that rotation. So what I could do is I could say, this thing here can also be written as V multiplied by whatever will accomplish that uh, anti-clockwise rotation of pi on three radians, which is E to the I pi on three. That, that will do the, um, the right uh, magnitude of the argument for me, right? So I can actually use this form here of, um, sorry, that's um, uh, U and V together, right? I can actually combine those together um, to show how I'm going to get my U squared plus V squared equals UV result, okay? Here's the way I'm going to write it. Let's come down here, get some new space. So I'm gonna call this uh, method two. Um, what I can say is V is, or what did I say? Did I say this right? Uh, no, no, sorry, this is not V times, it's U times. That's what I started with. Uh, this is the original complex number and then V gets to it by taking U uh, and writing V in terms of U. So, sorry about that. Uh, what can I say? Well, I can say V is equal to U times this E to the I pi on three. And then in order to get a um, sort of easier way to work with this, right? Like I can actually clear out all the complex numbers uh, very quickly or rather uh, sort of these parts that I need to manipulate the arithmetic of by cubing everything. You're like, cubing? Mr. Wu, why would we be cubing things? Well, watch, right? When I cube the left-hand side, you just get V cubed. When I cube the right-hand side, you get, well, this gets cubed, and then this also gets cubed, but because it's E to the I pi on three, you just multiply that index by three, which is E to the I pi. And the reason why this is useful is because now that I have taken that um, pi on three, which is up there in the Argan diagram, right? I've brought it back onto the real axis. So I can just evaluate it in a very straightforward way. And then this is no longer a complex numbers question, right? We've seen this before um, hundreds of times. Uh, the way to make a question easy to solve is to turn it from something hard into something like the same question, but a different form that's easier to manipulate. And I bet very few of you, but I'd be interested to see. Uh, okay. Yes. Sharma's just pointed it, well done. Um, I, I can actually turn this complex numbers question completely into a real numbers question. Watch this, right? EDI pi, it starts from the positive real axis and it cycles pi radians all the way to the opposite side of the real axis. So it's just negative one. Uh, and in fact, this is part of that famous Euler's identity that we looked at. So therefore, I'm just getting, oopsie daisy, V cubed equals U cubed times negative one. So it's negative u cubed on the right hand side. So I'm gonna add u cubed to both sides, which gives, which gives me this, u cubed plus v cubed, right? Now this is something that Pahan like immediately noticed that I did not in Tuesday's lesson. You're like, oh, hold on. This is actually a result that I can factorize. It's a factorization we often forget because we don't deal with cubes very often. We spend so much time in quadratic land. But what is the factorization for sum of cubes? This is gonna be u plus v, right, out the front, and then does this look familiar? U squared minus UV plus V squared. And I sort of had this, um, this mnemonic device that I actually, um, I said, but I didn't actually explain it in the previous lesson. Um, I used to remember this as SOAP, right? The signs here are same, opposite, always positive, 
same, opposite, always positive, compared to whatever sign you started with up the front. So this works for sum of cubes, it also works for difference of cubes. Um, you just get same, opposite, always positive, based on that being a minus sign rather than a plus sign. Okay, so I've got this result here, right? But you can actually say, wait a second, since I know that uh, you know, this u plus v, uh, this u plus v part of the factorization, it can't possibly be equal to zero. Why is that, right? Think about that. If u plus v, u plus v were equal to zero, then u would be equal to negative v, right? Can that work? Can I actually get an equilateral triangle that way? Um, have a think about what that means on your argand diagram. Um, there is a, there's like a single spot where it works, but generally speaking, remember U and V can be anywhere, right? Um, so this actually locks you into a very specific set of values, but we know there are more solutions for U and V than just this one, right? So therefore what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna say from here, wow, that's the worst curly brace I ever tried to draw. That's a little bit better, right? I can actually take this part here and say, if u and v can be anywhere on the argand diagram, then this is the part that has to be true. This part here, right? That's the part that I have to say, that factor has to be able to equal zero sometimes. And from here, you're like, oh, all I needed to do is add uv to both sides and I'm finished. You can see, except for the first two lines of my question, right up here, or maybe, maybe three lines, just to be clear. Um, I didn't even need complex numbers for the vast majority of the reasoning that I was doing there. I actually could get straight into to algebra and that was where most of the work was done. And that's why actually, if you have a comparison between my two solutions, there you go, um, this second solution is so much quicker, okay? So, uh, I'm really curious, a, a couple of people said, well, you all had a go and had different methods. Can anyone post in the chat for me? Well, let me say that again. Can everyone post in the chat for me did you have one of these two methods? Just say, yep, that was one of the ones that I got. Or did someone have something genuinely different? I'm really curious to see. Anybody? Emmanuel had a different one. Excellent. Okay, Zhao, you had the, the first method, um, which was the one I came up with first. So I'm impressed. That's okay. Anyone else? Okay, now, it's, <laughs> you gave me a frown for end, but did it work? Like, I think if I have a look here, yeah, you can, you can do all of that in mod arg. It just takes a little bit longer to write. All of the reasoning, I would say, is the same. Um, okay, Susie's got another one. That's great. Um, I am actually al almost finishing here, so um, I will just sort of let it, uh, if people have other methods, I'd love to see them. Uh, let me just quickly show you, and I think I should have it uh, just up here above. Yeah, here we go. So here's, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, I didn't focus too much on the part two of the question. It's just a one mark, it's relatively simple. Um, but here is just one example showing you that it does indeed work. Um, because if you recall back to the original question, it says find a U and a V for which this actually applies that gives you an equilateral triangle. So what I did was, um, I, I said, well, if I, I pop one up here, I can use symmetry here and be really cheap. Um, when you have a look at my working here, all of this stuff down here is not really necessary for your one mark. It just says, you know, tell me what those numbers are. Um, but I just wanted to prove my, for myself that this relation works. Um, the UV is fairly easy to do. You can see this actual, actually looks a whole lot like something that we did just down in method two, because you'd get e to the i pi. Over here on the left-hand side, it might not be quite as obvious what I've done. So I've just written these two as um, there's, u, so I've got u squared here. Here's v, I actually should uh, write that. This is u, this is v. Um, so uh, you get your u squared and your v squared. I've noticed that uh, this result here, and I chose it for this precise symmetry, edi four pi on three, that's not a principal argument, is it, right? Um, it's, it's gone all the way past pi down into the bottom half of the argand diagram. So I've rewritten it with a principal argument. And because of the symmetry I've chosen, it's e to the i negative two pi on three. So it actually becomes this u n minus v situation that I was mentioning before, which is just this very specific version where it works. So because these two are conjugates of each other, um, when you add, if you wanna think about it this way, uh, we don't often use our conjugate sort of uh, reasoning here. I can think about this as x plus i y, and x minus i, y. So you can see my uh, complex, or my imaginary components rather, here, they just cancel out. So you just get the two x's, which is these two real components, and they're both equal to negative a half, um, because it's this complex number over here, so there you get that negative one from before. 
So, um, I hope that made sense. I hope this was a question that gave you some insight into, just let have a look here, right? Um, an insight into not just like, oh, here's a solution method, but what's the thinking underneath it? Um, why would you choose one form of a complex number over another? In fact, if you have a look at my first method, um, I went and I used all of them at appropriate places, right? I started with exponential, because it's very succinct and I'm lazy and it makes the arguments easier to work with. Um, but then I had to, at this point in here, um, translate over into mod arg, into trigonometric form to evaluate this number. And then I used the rectangular form in here to actually accomplish this addition. And then I went back into exponential. So um, this kind of flexible use of complex numbers is often one that we miss, especially when the question gives you no clues about which form you should use.